the picks and bans go, though. That started out uh, in the top lane. Wow, Aurelia already targeting flares here. Yeah, flares is one of these newfangled carry top laners. Seems to be very popular now uh, in 2015. And yeah, his Hecarim, his Aurelia, he's just a very aggro player. And he goes sometimes a bit too hard. You'll see flares overextend uh, pretty frequently, even in the Challenger series. So up against Hanser and, and move. Going to see how that goes for him. LeBlanc gone from Inox. His next two probably Nidalee, Cassidy, <clears throat> maybe Kog'Maw in there as well as things that Inox tends to carry on. I don't know if they can really remove his champion pool too well. Yeah, the uh, early adapter of Cassidy, uh, yep. long range Kog'Maw, AP mid. Uh, he's got a... His Katarina was great too. Very in, Yeah, he's got a very diverse champion pool. The one thing that's really common with most of the champions is that they can carry really hard. Katarina can yep. go off really hard. Kog'Maw wants you to get to the late game. A huge carry potential there. So Inox likes to have mid laners that have a lot of power. He's not really a supportive mid laner player. No, no. It's going to be all carrying all the time. Even when Inox was a, uh, a top laner, he wanted to <laughs> exactly. carry as well. So just found a lane that suits the style better. All right, so two jungle bands and the Alistair away from Bunny Fufu. Gravity now to make their first pick on this one. You can see they banned sort of one per roll down the main carry slots. Taking their time, Coach Cop to tell Gravity what they want for first pick here. That's, I'm going to say, more an homage than a real pick, but you never know. Yeah, as we've seen, yeah, so strong into Nar, at least, especially if you get an experience advantage, but a little bit too early to tell for that. Alistar on the ban list does mean that there's possibility of a first pick um, support. Not going to happen this time, but Alistar really really making a big uh big waves here yeah no, both in europe and in north america uh, from the support laurel not going to be in this game though yeah trashy though i want to see yeah sejuani picked up there a couple of jungle bands come through and the next one down the list sejuani picked up already flares happy to play rumble right into hecarim and hide the rest of his roles yeah what a team fight combo locked in really early first round here for enemy esports they've got a huge huge uh, amount of power for any sort of fight taking uh, place in close quarters. Uh, early dragon should be. Uh, you have to be very careful about grouping up if you are gravity. So anytime you land that combo, Sejuani plus a rumble should be a team fight victory. Gravity yeah. though, they do have the Hecarim. See if he can get an oh. early lead and have one of those high impact teleport plays. Uh, he definitely might have that happen, but meanwhile, Gravity happy to go for high impact plays as well. And speaking of the uh, impulse lineup that was running this champion, Fizz coming back again in the mid lane here. So Keen, happy to blind pick a big scary assassin. All tech is here to make that team run fast. Yep. Another rushdown squad here looks to be from Gravity. I always really love combining Hecarim with Sivir as well. Get the extra damage on top of your speed. Okay, so rush down as you say for gravity, then how good is enemy esports counter engage? Can they withstand this kind of aggression? Well, the thing is, if you have a whole bunch of melee champions, it's pretty easy to land a good Sejuani ultimate and you just layer that rumble right on top of it. Absolutely true. We'll see if Inox wants to play something to continue to add AoE damage or if he's going to be more on the utility side of this one. Azir, I feel like, would work in terms of bullying back all these divers. We'll see. We hear people in the audience yell, Bart, that would work too. Cassidy, though, is the pickup here. Cassidy into Fizz. I want to say it's a good Cassidy matchup. Also, Nautilus comes through for body drop, so enemy esports hiding their AD carry pick for last. I do like uh, playing Cassidy uh, into the Fizz there, not only because of the passive and the magic damage shield that he gets, but being in melee range, Cassidy will just spam out his spells at Fizz, and anytime Fizz gets close, he can tap him with one of those auto attacks to restore a ridiculous amount of his mana and continue the harass. <laughs> so basically, you just spam out your spells on Fizz, try and keep him low, uh, and tap him every once in a while with the empowered auto. All right, then maybe a difficult lane matchup for Keen here. What it does, you know, is draw a lot of jungle attention, though. So, I'd, like, well, maybe not. Nunu and Sejuani, not the uh, most oppressive mid lane ganking jungles. Nunu confused me a little bit, actually, in terms of what he's trying to empower. Sivir, not the biggest need of attack speed buffs, and it's not like you're going to rush down people with the Nunu, really. it's it's. I'm not sure what he's doing exactly, otherwise Gravity, Still a lot of high impact players remove his first game in the North American LCS, his first game in a professional league, in a tier one league. He's playing Nunu on this one, and Otter gets 
a vein for himself, a bunch of low range rushdown champions, and he picks something short range himself. Ooh. The vein into Nunu, interesting. He is yeah. going to have a hard time getting around all those slow fields. We'll see if he can use his invisibility uh, to that end, though. Nunu himself probably going to get hit with a decent amount of AoE. Uh, his whole point is to try and single man tank the Sejuani ultimate for the rest of the squad. That's true. So two tanks and three damage dealers for the enemy esports lineup. Meanwhile, uh, some tank utility and damage kind of split across the entire gravity lineup here. The first game of the split and the last of the day for these teams and for us here in the North American LCS. Coach Cop, Coach Brad for Gravity and Enemy Esports sending their teams away with their first team comps of the split. New lineup for Gravity, new team, Enemy Esports. Final parting comments as champs select ends. Say goodbye to your teams, shake hands, and here we go. And since champions are locked in, that will definitely be the Smite Teleport Hecarim. So Smite Teleport takes a bit longer to come online, but you do scale a bit better since you are building Cinder Hall. Yeah, and of course, really fun late game power, a lot of health and all that. Now, guys, you've got one more opportunity to prove your precognitive powers. Share your game predictions by tweeting at LOL Esports and use either hashtag GVWin or hashtag NMEWin. We are here at a game five. It's going to be a great one. How strong are these teams? As we move into the summer split, let's find out. Actually, really like the uh, enemy esports team comp here. Decent amount of setup CC uh, to try and get an easier schedule with that Nautilus coming from the support role. And Cassidy plus Vayne is just always such a good combo. Two of the best champions at chasing down uh, stragglers. If there's a big AoE team fight and your enemies split up, mm -hmm. Cassidy and Vayne very good at capitalizing on that. Well, while Gravity might split up, enemy esports may want to stick together in this one. Inox says the players on enemy esports have a bond that goes beyond being teammates. When we went into the challenger scene, it really felt like we all came from the same place. Like we were all the same level with each other. No one really had like the impression that they're above anyone. We all just became really good friends and we were able to bond, go hang out and do anything. On enemy, it's more so that we're brothers more so than friends. Like we were just that close together. Band of Brothers. Ironic that they're such close friends when their name is called Enemy. Mm. That's an easy one. <laughs> it counts. Mm. What? All right. What is your reservation here? Well, as of right now, the friends are all just going to have a safe early start. If the duo lane's going to take this uh, Gromp, probably means that they are expecting a two versus two matchup, so they have not gotten any early alerts as to the lane swap here from Gravity, so looks like it will probably catch enemy off guard as Altec and Bunny Fubu head to the top side. Let's see if they group up the wave. If you do start Gromp like this, uh, enemy, now they, op they actually are removed from the option of freezing the lane because they're just going to meet right now uh, without anybody able to corral them. So the best option in this case is to try and shove it into the turret to try and get it to bounce back uh, so you can regain control and manage those minions. Here goes Bunny Fufu with that patented level one invade from the support to try and harass the duo jungle. And it looks like he's done his job fairly well here. Can he get the hard reset is what he's looking for here. You get the, yeah, he got yep. it. You get, all, right. all you're trying to do is get the camp to try and switch targets uh, onto you and then back to the, oh! Wow, he almost got it. Origin Love point it so that you can get that hard reset. Delay them a little bit extra. And his work's not done yet. <laughs> He's going to keep it up. So the reason I really like this strategy um, is that the two biggest playmakers for your team in a lane swap are your jungler and your top laner. And to a lesser extent, your support, as we've just seen very early on. So if by just committing your support, to that jungle and top lane harass, you take away almost all of enemies' early game playmaking ability. Have you ever tried to create something uh, in a lane when your jungler and your top laner with the teleport are both behind? It's extremely difficult. It puts all of the weight onto body drop on this Nautilus to make anything happen early game if enemy are actually gonna create waves. So that means Kassadin, 
just going to be pretty much on his own farming up in that mid lane. And we'll see if Gravity can capitalize. Because they're sending three people down bottom now. Makes sense. Team like Gravity heading towards the bottom of the map right here. Move, Bunny, Foo Foo, and Hanser all triple jungling to make sure they can defend this turret in time. They're not going to be cut off like we saw in the CLG game earlier. Otter in a one-on-one, -on -one, but Hanser is the same level as the guy. All right. And more coming in. Forced to flash early, but Move can still flash Snowball or just walk in to do it as well. Nice condemn on a Bunny Foo Foo. Will keep Otter safe. And here come the reinforcements. A little bit late, though. So three members of enemy uh, spending a lot of time walking and not getting much done. Meanwhile, three lanes of experience and gold income for gravity. Every second that the map stays in balance like this is a huge win for gravity. Because even though the wave is in control of the enemy there and they're able to prune it on their side, uh, gravity's still getting experience income. Whereas these small advantages of the jungle camps are barely being scraped together. Uh, Cop yeah. up on, or not cop anymore, I'll take. Yeah, up on the top side, he's got a free lane to himself. Let's oh. see if anybody finds themselves in the jungle there, though. Looks like they will just pass through. Thresh going to run into the double jungle squad. Yeah, enemy knows about this. Trashy going to clear away maybe another pickup, but finds Bunny Fufu a level two. Thresh taking a lot of damage. Ignite popped onto Flares. The hook over the wall is going to catch Trashy. Flares nearly going down. Flashes still drops to Kane. First blood for gravity. Going to be answered. Five, Back though. goes to Inox. Now the hook on to move. Exactly. Alltech is not here whatsoever, but the escape comes through. One for one in kills. First blood, one for one trade for gravity in a four versus five. And Otter had to leave his lane, lost a bunch of minions trying to come help the squad because they were keeping the lane on their own side of the map and building up a big gravity wave. It killed all, all of the minions very quickly, rushed into the turret, and will bounce back now. So that fight turned out really well for gravity. Because as we said, this entire time, Alltech on the top side, just freely farming. And he is just freely farming. The gold staying fairly close to the first blood lead. Pretty massive move. Will get himself the top lane scuttler. 80 gold for him. Gravity staying a little bit ahead here. Alltech just freely and safely farming in a matchup that would have been typically pretty rough. Sibber versus Vayne. If the wave can't be pushed, the threat of Vayne killing you is pretty moderately high as time goes on. Flares has yet to lane at all in this game. He's purely been jungling alongside either Body Drop or Flares, and Gravity making a nice move here. Flares going to get caught out by a hook as he turns the corner. Spitter Ice down. Blast. They're just going to run away, actually. Their guys were a little bit afraid, even though Sivir was right around the corner there. Yeah, they set the trap for a single target, and two of them came marching down the road. So, <laughs> abort mission. Uh, they pull out with no casualties. Looks like once again we're in a game where only really two lanes of farm for one of the teams. Hanser had spent some time farming. He's actually already picked up the machete to make that happen a little bit faster. Yeah, he's got smite, so yeah, it's fine. Farm in the jungle, reverting to that is very easy for him. Just waiting for the vein wave to push back. He is six. And that's going to take a whole lot of damage here. Thankfully for him, the ignite is down already, so Keen couldn't clean the kill up just yet. But that is Inux's flash gone. And Keen inserting his will. The mid lane on Inox. Inox, though, is going to start scaling. Level 6 here. And is going to, looks like he's going for the rod build on Cassidy. Pretty standard. Okay. I've seen a lot of different variations. The last one I remember Inox doing was actually tier into Luden's Echo. I think. I could be incorrect in that one. But going Rod of Ages here, wanting the durability. All the assassins that rush down makes a lot of sense, in my opinion. Oh, wow. Actually, also on that, rest, that last recall where Gravity decided to swap lanes. Both side lanes recalling. They lost a wave on both sides. Ooh. So enemy getting a bit closer back into this game, able to shove both top and bottom. But on the return visit, Altec is able to use his boomerang blade and bouncing blade. Get right back. All right, so here we are. Lanes matched back up to equal. Teleport up for both these top laners. So if there's any bot lane focus, we can see the TPs come through. BF Sword versus Cutlass and Boots. So after all of these swaps, um, the biggest difference is that experience disadvantage that I kept pointing out for Hauntzer versus Flares. Flares on the Rumble still level four because he was doing that double jungling. 
Whereas Gravity, even though Hanser wasn't able to get a lot of the CS in the lane, was sitting there absorbing experience. So level 6 Hecarim going to easily have the upper hand up in that top side. So that's why they're supporting him with Vision. They've got wards for him. Uh, and he definitely has the bully pressure up in the top side over flares at the moment. Despite the fact that he has no combat items at all, that hook, nice dodge there by Body Drop. Keeping himself alive. Otter, as you mentioned, XP advantages. Also, he's down about a level under Alltech. Alltech nearly eight as Otter hits seven on this minion. So experience all around the board. Even though the gold is basically the same, XP matters. Now, it is worth putting out that Trashy is six, whereas Move is not. So something on this other side. And Body Drop five to Bunny Fufu's three. So it's just in different places, I guess, as I look at all the numbers. Well, let's see if we can uh, pull off a move with the Sejuani level six. Immediately after hitting level 6, looking for a gank. Not really any opportunity for him. Yeah, nothing just yet. The level 6 has happened, but nothing really positive afterwards. Move did go Sight Stone early. Nice. Spell Shield to block the Condemn. No real trades all that successful just yet on the enemy esports side. They've actually pulled the gold back up in their favor. Looks like Rumble is trading just fine. And Vayne holding pretty nicely. It's just this mid lane that keeps getting worse, it looks like as Inox continues to survive all these trades very well and push Keen around a uh, 10 minion lead. Not too bad. Sejuani up 10 as well. Cinder Hulk done on her. A lot of things just came through for enemy esports here. The Rumble also hitting level 6. So yeah, all these ultis, aside from body drops, are available, but his is going to be one wave away. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to be content to stick with the farm game because they haven't placed any wards. There are almost no wards on the map for enemy, just a couple defensive ones for each lane. Very, very close. So any move that they make, any aggressive move, would be fairly blind, and they'd have to account uh, for the presence of Nunu as well. well it looks like they're going to venture into the jungle and try and get some more information by getting deep wards down. Meanwhile, a fight in the top lane, though. The overheated rumble going to do plenty of damage towards Haunts. A couple more auto attacks go through. Got a lot of potions. Done trading. Now, Teleport is down for Flares, but up for Hanser, meaning he could have used the later abuse of Dragon Attempt. Flash Force from Keen puts the Shark in towards Trashy. And that is actually a fair bit of damage towards the uh, Sejuani and her board. Not going to feel great about this one either. Keen, one hit away from dead. Move can try to help with this one. Inox jumps over the w as best he can. Still does get traded back, but multiple Earths use, ults use for that one. Bunny Fufu in onto Otter, but how much damage can they really even do? A lot of knockups come through. Bunny was one auto attack from dead. Silverbolts would have, I think, killed him as Ignite was still on. The heal wouldn't help enough. Move on the way down, though. Uh, looks like Otter and Body Drop will back off in time. Not going to be attacked there. So the big, big difference of the teleport actually doesn't benefit uh, Gravity that much. It's still a one-for-one -one trade, and they had to expend their teleport advantage. So that's true. Hanser now going to have to head back to the top squad. All right, a minute and 25 seconds for the teleport of Flares, and maybe we'll see enemy esports abuse that advantage. If coordination's all good, they should know a big TP advantage. Dodge and the hook from Otter, and we still sit at a 200 gold lead. Enemy esports, we asked how good they would be in this summer split as a new team. Gravity, sixth place team from last split. Certainly no slouches in their own right. But though they do have a changed roster, which might slow them down for a bit. Enemy Esports certainly holding up with an established LCS team. They are at that. This, if, the, if a Dragon fight does break out, it's going to be extremely uh, eventful here. Because Enemy have such a good combo of AoE. Almost feel like Gravity would just continue with a split push and try and trade turret for the early Dragon. Early Dragon, not that big of a deal. Uh, the 6% doesn't multiply that much at this point in the game. True. And the global gold from an outer turret is substantial. This is risky by gravity. It keeps showing up bot lane despite the fact that Flares' TP is just about back up. They've got a very small window left. Nice hook comes in on both sides. Body drop nearly already dead, but Trashy shows up for the stun. Not enough to kill off move, though the land hit from Buddy Fufu keeps him safe, and Otter cannot capitalize with the ulti there for himself. Still three versus three down to the bot lane, though. TP up in like four seconds for Rumble. There are no deep wards to teleport. Whoa, move. Whoa, over aggressive, but a lot of damage. Butterdump cannot be in this fight anymore. This turret still taking damage. 
It looks like no one is going to be afraid of this vein anymore. The turret does get taken down. Well played, Gravity. Good calling all around. Yep. Gravity going to try and knock down the outer ring of turrets. Now that they get that one down, try and quickly shove the wave and then swing their AD carry and support across the map. Uh, if they can move them up top and try and chain uh, the outer turrets, then they can try and take control of this mid game. Inox now has to wait a little bit longer, so stacking up his Rod of Ages. Mm -hmm. Whereas Fizz here, Keen, has gone for early physical damage for the laning phase by getting the Sheen, allowing him to trade a little bit better with Kassadin. Yeah. But, you know, since uh, Inox did get the early first blood as well, got off to a pretty good start. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the CS lead in mid just keeps going Inox's way. It was plus 10 last we saw, now it's plus 20, and this partial freeze making it a little bit worse. Gravity take the turret off that, uh, I guess, trade that they won. They got more damage dealt, and the tur turret got taken down. They recalled back Infinity Edge at 14 minutes for Alltech. Yeah. He's going to be a very big force this game. Both Cinder Hulks done for Gravity as well. Well, they back off. Uh, generally, you want to try and punish Kassadin for the early lack of wave clear, especially if you have Sivir, who's taken the outer turret this early. So they do move Sivir over to the mid lane to try and take down the outer turret, but no support means he backs off from the turret, and they back off from the blue buff as well. Enemy able to defend. All right, good hold then. Enemy esports down 300 gold for themselves. Gravity, of course, built that lead through the push primarily. Enemy's other advantages simply coming through their mid lane landing phase for the most part. Both junglers now matching items with Sightstone Cinder Hulk. So wards going to be plentiful on both rosters. Two upgraded warding totems also here for Gravity. Another one on one. Keen looking for Inox there. The almost completed Lich Blade plus Ignite forcing Inox away. One more Q could maybe get the kill. Inox forced to grab some help and haunts her. Wow! In the top lane, Solo's flares. The solo kill. All right, let's see what happens down bottom. Not much. Uh, of import here. Inox had to burn his flash, so with the solo kill top, pretty much guarantees you the dragon as well. Gravity able to gain advantage on both sides of the map. This was just players overstaying. One level Double. up from Hanser. You know, he had a massive sustain advantage, not only because of Hecram's kit, but also because uh, stacking so many potions. Bunny lands the hook. And goodbye, body drop lives up to his name. He goes down. TP's coming in for enemy esports. All the same. Equalizer is available. Will they take the fight? In comes Otter. Stuns up move. That's going to be one kill picked up. Down goes Nunu. But they re engage from Keen. Flashless, igniteless, and ultimateless means this chase is going to be just fine. Enemy esports pick up two on the backside for the death of body drop. But they will take Dragon forward as well. Oh. Nicely done. Really close to the boomerang steal. Yeah, that. We did see that slice, uh, slight discrepancy between teleport timers really cost gravity right there. So even though they got the kill, solo kill up top for Hecram, Flares is able to teleport on respawn. A little, gravity just take a little bit too long to take down the objective after the fight. And they're not able to secure first dragon. All right, well, slight miss that for gravity puts the game right back to equal here. Nearly identical gold games. Vayne keeps farming on up. She's managed to dodge what can be early late weaknesses of Vayne. Going equal is a happy place to be when you're a Vayne player. And this is where we are right now for the enemy esports AD carry. Otter's tried for close to three years now to make his way into the LCS. He played in the <laughs> Season 3 qualifier, the very, very first one. He finally found his way in. So far, actually putting a pretty good performance in his first LCS game. Yeah, the entire team here so far for enemy. Pretty strong early start against Gravity as well, who performed really well last split. Albeit with some roster changes this split. Mm -hmm. Definitely holding their own so far. And remember, Inox uh, Rod of Age is still constantly stacking up, so ramping up that Cassadin. Ever stronger for those chase down team fights. Yeah, it's interesting. He's doing Roa cooldown boots Ludens. I don't think that's Lich Bane next. I think it's most likely to be Ludens Echo. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, found a way to put CDR into the build after all. I know some castings like to get that cooldown reduction to have a just ludicrous amount of rift walking all over the place. And if he can get the uh, W for the mana restore, he can keep that jumping all around and B really scary. The Luden's Burst should help him quite a bit. Otter has been lane swapped to the top lane here to try to fight up against Hauntzer. This 2v1 should be pretty easy for the enemy dual lane. But Move might be on his way up there to help. And Fizz from Keen has pushed very deeply through the bot lane. 
Ooh, trying to keep up the split push with very little vision. He's only got that one ward he just placed himself. And playing with fire. Oh no, he plays two. Anox playing with ice though, taking a bit of damage, but now comes in towards Altec the stun, not quite gonna land on the uh, gravity AD carry. That turret is so yeah, low in the mid lane. Because he flashed it, very quick reaction there from Altec. Yeah. So we're seeing uh, Altec display some of his mechanical prowess that has been talked up. And they do come away with the defense though. Enemy at every turn, they've been trying to defend uh, the domino early taking of turrets uh, for gravity. And they've been able to slowly, slowly uh -oh, make their yeah. way to top now. Uh, they've been able to keep that tower standing for a little bit longer. It's fairly low, though. The conga line is stopped. Plenty of vision here from the sight stone Nunu. It's similar for enemy esports. That conga line top lane gravity was kind of their first, but spotted by a ward. Otter played safely enough. Gravity's new jungler move definitely doing a decent job of getting Ward's down to the map, but he's slowly but surely getting out-farmed here by Trashy. Yeah. Level 8 versus 10 as time goes on. About to be 11 as Sejuani's going for her red buff on the top side. Three level advantage for the jungler is definitely big. Getting first to that level 11 is very big for Sejuani, so I think that is a good point. Having level 2 stun here for Trashy. Yeah, that's a quarter second to it. As of... Uh, Gravity squad, though, maybe we're seeing a little bit of the indecisiveness and inability to capitalize on the you know, early momentum of knocking down outer turret after outer turret, yeah. or rotating their sliver effectively. Maybe due to a little bit of the uh, lack of you know, strong, decisive main shot caller. I tend to agree. You've got a, a, a head sliver and a head top lane split pusher, and you know, the mid laner has no wave clear, and you're not getting through it. And they sort of made this attempt mid. They had yeah. they moved the Sivir over to mid, try and punish the cast, and try and knock it down. But they sort of split objectives, and they had Nunu go for an invade with Thresh at the same time, and Sivir could not complete the shove mid. So they kind of grasped at too many things. Maybe it's a side effect of everybody adding information now that they don't have the main single shot caller. Everybody trying to help, and they sort of split themselves in two different directions, not really able to accomplish either goal. However, the mid turret extremely low, since they keep coming back to it and taking chips out of it. And then we'll see, that is it's so, so low. low. All right, Alta could actually just walk over there. Even move could take it down. Just whoever wants to actually attack that thing twice is gonna be killed. They do have the double Cinder Hulk stacking for them. Mm -hmm. I mean, this team is going to get very tanky, and Otter... Uh, oh, I should have Rune King. Fight that guy. He does have a buddy with him as well. Yeah, come on, dude. You don't make highlight reels not going for <laughs> 1v1s. All right. Well, Gravity invading, though, quite nicely. A couple of wards into the jungle. Trashy forced to give them a fair bit of room, and uh, Gravity have set up keen split push area quite well. For how bad that Fizz Cassidy matchup was, mm -hmm. Keen's doing a whole lot better now facing Flares, right? Flares had itemized a whole lot of armor early on. He got the Seeker's arm guard actually before Boots um, to, to deal with the Hecarim matchup, but they put Fizz against him, and suddenly it's useless. And now he's got to buy uh, a Null Magic Mantle to try to keep him in this matchup, and Flares kind of getting pushed around. Good spell doing well. there from Altec. Sivir able to wave clear really easily. Man. Enemy, they're the ones with the uh, lack of pushing potential, since they have Vayne and a bunch of melees. But yeah, the uh, the Fizz as well, especially after the nerfs um, and the sort of rework to Fizz, I don't feel like he scales uh, nearly as well as Kassadin. Yeah. But it looks like enough of the other guys are scaling up as well. You said Hecarim is a slow starter, but really good late game. He's doing fine. Sivir against a short-range line is going to land a lot of ricochet damage. Mid lane turret finally goes down, and Gravity have knocked down that outer ring. Enemy Esports' only objective grab has been the one dragon they fought over. Gravity now sitting on a lead with some eventually good lane pushing. wonder if we will ever see Gravity go with the split push to try and uh, get some more pressure. They finally got that mid turret down, so it really does open up the map for them. Try and get some of those wards in the jungle to catch enemy in rotation uh, and pull them across the map. Try and use that Fizz and the uh, Heck Room while they can. All outer turrets down. Looking to make, and that's pretty much where all the uh, gold advantage comes from, too. Yeah. I mean, uh, once enemies start knocking down turrets, if enemy wins a team fight, 
they will be able to claim quite a lot. Yeah, exactly they can. But speaking of claiming, they're going for Dragon right away, and it was just off the recall of Move as well as Bunny Fufu, and even Keen had uh, recalled not long ago. He just made his way back now, but Dragon started. Enemy Esports still around in this one. Rumble has teleport, as does Hecarim. Otter is here, though. Enough members. Looks like they will take down Dragon with no contest. Really smite for Trashy. Gold goes to Otter. Two Dragons for one side, three turrets to the other. So we do get a look at a uh, Fizz versus Vayne side, side lane split push. Uh, Both of them are bringing uh, I'm gonna say Fizz wins that. backup, though. Wards for both squads as well. So nobody going to take the bait. Otto's not even running full magic with this Blitz here. He's only at 37. This is hmm, a little bit of mana regen in there. Uh, usually you see attack speed. I, I guess a lot of people do run mana regen blues. I never understood that on Ada carries, but... <laughs> Maybe not for Vayne either. Yeah. I mean, I've seen that on Vayne is a weird thing. So, I don't know. I guess we'd have to look at the page afterwards. But yeah, he's only running about five magic resist glyphs. Out goes Sejuani. Again, Gravity trying to control this eastern jungle, the one that Keen is pushing around. It seems like that's where most of this uh, effort is being placed for Gravity, is setting up a playground for Keen to just keep scaling up and doing good things on this Fizz. Yeah. It really does feel like this game is going to come down to uh, the big team fight. <laughs> yeah. When they do clash over the objective, because we already talked over, you know, enemy. This is their first time. They're so excited to be in the LCS. Uh, first game on the stage. Uh, gonna be a little hesitant to commit uh, to early risky strategies. So fairly safe and controlled for them so far. Uh, and on the other side, Gravity losing a main shot caller not quite fully committing to the mid-game plan either. So both both teams kind of waiting around for that big team fight uh, for it to really explode. Well, we've had a couple of fights before, and they've gone back and forth. Looks like enemy esports have largely made Gravity play around them. It's just been Gravity's advantage playing the split push game. They've just done a little bit of a better job of it. Defensive items now coming in for Hanser, so no Triforce, just this full tank hacker with Challenging Smite. Whew. Yeah, they are really going to count on Altec for the DPS in the late game. Well, starts to make new to make a little bit more sense after Yeah, Keen's going to do his best. He has added another AP scaling uh, yeah. ratio to his kit, so that helps your late game damage a bit, adding the uh, scaling of the Lich Bane, mm -hmm. but still going to have a hard time keeping up with the damage output from enemy in the late game. And it looks like they are making a move, decisive move here from enemy down bottom. They want to try and get some global gold. Remember, there are teleports up from both of these top laners. And a lot of space given by enemy esports. They're just so afraid of Keen doing something, even though he can't even clear the caster wave. They deny the CS. Oh, they cancel. Inox going to run straight back due to the shove here mm. from Sivir Nunu. You can't keep up with that shove, though. Kassadin doesn't even bring that much wave clear. He's taking a lot of damage, but in comes Flares. He wants to flank this one, but takes so much damage. He does not have Zonia's. The Abyssal Scepter doesn't help him survive Altsec. A one for one as Anox comes in. Now move in the fray, taking up this Kassadin quite easily. Eats the minion, gets slowed back down. Hanser now in the mix as well. But out they go. One for one, top laner dead, AD carry dead. And summoners for both. Both of them burning flash. Altsec even the heal as well. So the one for one. The Anox burned all of his, so. Uh, as did Bunny Fufu, a lot of summoners used there, but now mid lane being pressured without the AD carry, without really the only wave clear team or wave clear tool on the team. But gravity still <laughs> given the room to clear it. Both these teams, as you were mentioning before, mm -hmm. I feel like a little bit overly patient. First game on the big stage here. Yep. And it's such a close game. It's hard to make that call for the full all in commitment to a team fight. If you do lose a team fight completely, mm -hmm. then as we said, a bunch of outer turrets are going to go down. It's going to be a huge gold swing. Yep. That one mistake is going to be really hard to come back from. So nobody wants to be the first to make that mistake. Yeah. I mean, keep in mind, this is the first professional game for, I believe, four of the players in this game. Moves first on a top tier league, and everyone but Flares and Inox, first timers for enemy esports to my knowledge, if I don't have someone backwards here. We do have some pretty good item breakpoints that might spur enemy into a decision, though, because they've got, you know, the fully stocked route, the Luden's Echo already on Inox. Inox 
Very, very powerful. And his whole idea is to go take out Sivir. If he takes out Sivir, then gr the gravity team will collapse because enemy have plenty of more damage sources. Gravity do not. So yeah. that plus the quick Sivir on Otter should allow him to survive and exactly. be that secondary damage source. Whether he removes Challenging Smite from Hanser or the Fish from Keen, or hopefully both for his sake, this vein leg going to be slippery enough to do a pretty good job in these fights. Not a lot of peel for him. It's like Nautilus and, and Sojani can try, although they typically CC more offensively. Yeah. I like the chaos that that combo does create. If Sejuani and uh, Rumble can uh, land a combo, that's a huge, huge area of the battlefield that Vayne can just tumble around in. Yeah. Definitely works well as cleanup. We've seen uh, it was Najin who ran cast cool. via and Vayne for cleanup. Sivir move up top. Sivir ult for a rotation. Wow, they're going to really catch flares. This one has no CC for the new ult. There's going to be the kill picked up, and it will go to Altec. 2, 1, and 1. Bottom turret down. Yeah, OK, split push. Otter, man after my own heart, split pushing on Vayne all game long, 306 CS. I mean, a very, very large champion. Inox pushing down the mid lane well, also in gravity. Risking a Baron attempt right here in the face of some wards. Vayne cannot join this fight. It's a 3v5. Trashy's got a stun. There was no rumble. Here comes Inox. A lot of damage. Bunny Poop with the first casualty, but in comes the re-engage. A bit of a stun to buy some time. Trashy goes down to Keen. Body drop forced to run. Otter has joined in. Move for oh, some oh. flash away from Baron. Body low. drop goes down. Inox gets a kill, but it's going to be traded back on. But the vein cleanup is here. What can he actually kill? Goes for Hanser. Takes a lot of damage. TP comes in. Two more hits will kill him. There's flares. There's the slowdown. There's the kill on the Keen. That is an ace for enemy esports. <laughs> All right. Uh, I I wanted to see the uh, screen just over Baron there because Move stayed in on Baron so long. It must have been at like 1500 or something because that was a really really split team for Gravity. Yeah. We mentioned how having a decisive. Okay, let's see if we can get that health in there. Okay, they're committed to it. It's at 3,000, two and a half. And they're splitting DPS off of it. Move wants to finish. 2,000 barely out of smite consume combo range. Ouch. But Altec is focused on killing the champions, and Move basically goes down only to Baron. They also pretty much tunnel vision on the target that they're calling for. So allow Vayne to come in through the back and take out Altec. Whew. After all that, free. Only the one outer turret bottom really went down <laughs> to that. That's true. That already happened before. I guess the mid turret. That drops. So now we're at a 1,000 gold game. These two teams very evenly matched, playing the laning phases for the most part. Dragon number three on the table. Enemy esports do have all oh. their ultimates except for body Hecram. drops. Hecram with the teleport. Uh, home Massive guard. stun. In comes the flank. Otter is saving this one. Inox nearly going down. Keen buying time with the Zonia. Oh. Forcing Inox away. But in goes Hans. You're trying to take him down. Trade kills back and forth. Inox over the wall. Still getting away from this one. But move is alive as well. And Biter Drop gets killed. Otter now alone versus four. Great cleanup here for Gravity. Inox, does he want part of this one? He's going to go for oh. Altec. But the spell shield was there. And it's a kill onto Inox for nothing. Great by Altec to heal and spell shield to stay alive in this one. All right. That should be Baron, because uh, if Otter actually is able to pull off the 1v4 single man hero Baron stop, then he deserves a medal. All right, it is going to be the Baron here. Hunter should be able to take it up. Don't let Move die to it again. And Gravity should claim spoils of the victory. Yeah. All right, all is well for the Gravity lineup. 1,000 gold lead after the team fight. Move is really oh, nearly dead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Move's worst enemy is Baron. The minions fight back against Nunu. It's still a Baron right, pick Yeah, let's take another look at the team fight because everybody gets split up here. Boom, there's the two-man combo and a beautiful Rumble ultimate on top. Altec has to run out of it. He's able to freely fire here from the back. But the key point is the home guard uh, teleport comes in from Hanzo. So Inox is pretty much out of it. And Altec, nobody's able to focus Altec from the backside. The blood yeah. boiled. Sivir on the backside, so much AoE that kind of goes unnoticed. And there's the spell shield as soon as he sees the flash. Yeah. All tech, pretty quick reactions all game long with Sivir. So many narrow escapes as well by Gravity in that fight. Altec cutting back, gets into a brush to drop aggro, move, getting away constantly with barely any health left on him. It took Baron to take him down. 
the brush channeled Nunu ultimate. Always oh, fun to pull off. Players in combat with Hanser. Inux helping quite a bit as well. Again, this is full tank Hecarim, though, so he just doesn't die very fast to this Cassidy, who's now basically out of mana. And good luck hitting W on a minion wave when you have the threat of Sivir and everyone else the entire time. Still no re regen for him as slow onto Otter. He's forced to pop the ulti to get away, which means absolutely nothing for this vein. No good hooks landing, and Gravity's still sieging well. Trying to make the most of this Baron buff here. Protect the cannon minion as long as they can to get a little bit of extra damage on that inhibitor turret. Swing up for that global gold. Really the whole point of this Baron buff is try and increase your gold lead so that they can regain control of the dragon area before that comes up. Uh, we'll see if they can keep this area controlled. Looks like top lane turret is the target of choice for gravity. Blue elixir picked up for flares. If he's like me, he'll forget to use it for the team fight. Hopefully he's better than that. Remember, he's not doing much. Keep your eyes all focused on Alltech. Alltech is the bride here. Everybody's going to try and drop ultimates on top of him. If they get Nautilus, Sejuani, Rumble coordinating and Alltech goes down, Enemy can still pull this off, even with the Baron buff here for Gravity. Well, it's only going to last about 30 more seconds, this Baron buff. Blue Elixir chugged by Flares. He won't forget this time. But this is pretty much the last wave that's going to have Baron buff here. Bunny people popping the early ulti to try to kite away. He's afraid of this fight. It looks like enemy wants in. They pop the ulti. It's an all-sides move. Forced to flash away. Equalizer is great in the back lines. Flare stays alive. And in comes the dive. Bunny drop by his time, but not enough as Otter drops. Inox, now the only man left to deal damage, but it's just clean up here. Gravity gets all the way through, and they're going to clean up these last two guys. A triple kill for Alltech in his first game on the team. They can take more off this. That's exactly what Gravity wanted. Move the f single man to take the Sejuani ultimate. Alltech easily able to kite out and auto attack. He even uses his flash forward over the wall to clean up after all of enemy CC has been used. So easy move inside to the inhibitor here for Gravity. And even Keen. Oh, oh. God. All right, that was a little overzealous. Inox has one picked up. Finally, a revenge kill, but it's still four men alive inside the base. Inox does not have any great targets here. It would be pretty difficult to knock down Move and Bunny Fufu. There's some wards around, but they see Inox. I think he's going to get nothing for this. No neutrals up to take. There's a good wave in the bot lane. It will be teleported. No, sorry, the top lane teleport for Flares. He wants to knock something down. Equalizer up soon. Flares could slow a lot of them down. Knocks down Bunny Fufu or tries for it. Forces the flash away. Equalizer up Rumble in three seconds. Now. Pops it, buys a bit of time. Bunny has nowhere to go until now. That's fine. And out he goes. Aww. He block himself there with the lantern. <laughs> but this buys time for enemy esports to knock down a couple turrets on the backside. Keen is still dead. Bunny has to heal. Ottawa sent top wing, though. It's going to be a 4v4 in this mid lane as soon as Keen respawns. And yeah. the team will head top side. Delay backs long enough, and they might be able to grab two turrets off of the back of that. Uh, lost team fight inside the base. However, keep in mind, Rumble Equalizer is down for any impending fights here. So if enemy esports gets caught out, they're missing a they key member. Defend. They got to They might have to defend really quickly here. Nunu, never mind. Sivir's not with him. They don't care. Yeah. Just Hecarim slip pushing bottle lane to keep that wave pushed up. Good allocation of resources. Gravity, no to sacrifice those two turrets. Get the rest of the map back under control. So let's look, take a look at the uh, initiation because everything from Thresh is down, so that's great. However, they use the... Nautilus ultimate on the full tank Hecarim, and the Sejuani ultimate on the Nunu. Look at Altec in the backside. He can easily free firing the entire time. Fizz on the front lines. Pretty much no damage left for him either. And the tanks on Gravity are able to absorb the brunt of the initiation from enemy, freeing yeah. up their two damage sources to just go wild. Yeah, so while Altec gets the spell shield, what uh, Body Drop tries to do, Keen and Hans are just destroyed. Poor Otter. Righteous Glory pop. They don't quite catch on the move. Ult comes in, hits. Not for a stun on a Bunny Fufu. 
as they limp away, and now the re-engage might happen. Okay. No Glacial Prison. In comes the fish. Thankfully for enemy esports, it misses. Equalizer with the choke point. Key in a bit overextended. Will they get much more off this one? Pops the Zonias, and into the back line they go one more time, but the stun's gonna land. Otter is safe against Hanser, and a bunch of damage to the front lines. They're gonna trade tanks in the front line. All tech oh, out a really bad spot. Gets taken out. Otter is still alive. He catches move, a double kill for the Cassidy. That is an ace for two for enemy esports. Where do they go? Woo! Gravity funnel in through the ramp. An enemy finally able to get their hands on Altec. He had burned his flash offensively in the earlier team fight. He had no more mobility. His Sivir ultimate ran out because they used it to get in range and get the fight in the first place. Woo! And we see what happens when the AD carry goes down in your Nunu team. All right. Yeah. Lots of uh, damage missing suddenly for the lineup. <laughs> So a quick pause coming through on this one. Looks like it's with Keen. We'll see what that ends up being as time moves on. We got QA on the scene to figure out what's going on here with these guys. All right, so while we are waiting, how about we pull up a replay of the last fight? Because that's more interesting than QA. I mean, but the guy's got a cool lip ring and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the cat call from the audience, great, thank you guys. Um, yeah, okay, we'll get the replay up as soon as we can, of course, in this one. Uh, as a recap of what happened to that fight, it's a 3,000 gold lead afterwards. All right, so Silver Ultimate channeling. Uh, the ultimate as well from Keen misses at the very beginning. That equalizer down the ramp stalls for so long. Sort of a half commitment from Gravity gets the Zonias out from Keen really early. And then Otter easily able to uh, take out Hanser here with the true damage percentage damage, and Altec finds himself suddenly right in Otter's face. They collapse on Altec, and there's nothing left there for Gravity. Yeah, to, in order to dive AD carries properly, unless you're playing Zed or Talon, you need two people to kill off an AD carry with shields in the back line. You've got a face of the mountain uh, on body drop. You've got a locket on trash, and you've got a QSS here on Otter, which means you can't kill him with full tank Hecarim by yourself. That just doesn't happen. Like, in a 1v1 on an open field, Vayne would still win that fight. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the fact that Keen went in by himself, that Equalizer did buy so much time, that really, really helped Otter survive in the fight. And even still, he ended that battle at one-third health. I mean, you saw how close it ended up being, but 6-1 and 5 on Vayne. Otter has tried so many times to qualify for the LCS, and here he is, second highest gold in the game. 11 KDA, I imagine, has got to be the highest in the game as well. In fact, it is. As I look over, everyone has more than one death here. Uh, what a great start of a performance for him as well. First first game, gets to last pick his AD carry after seeing the comp. Goes for Vayne. High risk, but very high reward here. I got to sing the praises for the, for the rookies here overall, starting quite nicely. And uh, it is going to be a very bloody game. Yeah. <laughs> the, the rest of it as well. Pretty much as we... Expected all coming down to these team fights. AD carry positioning becomes paramount. Yes. And then the ability to reach them becomes even bigger. And in terms of reach, like, I guess you can spell shield some of it on the Sivir side, but you've got Rumble, Cassidin, and then like a little bit of Nautilus and, and Sejuani can sometimes reach. Mm -hmm. But Rumble, Cassidin is enough to one shot an AD carry. Uh, you have pretty mediocre amounts of magic resist on Altec. Uh, yeah, he does have the Quicksilver, and that's it. Yeah, he's got 72 when he's sitting near uh, someone defending him. So he's got, you know, a decent amount, but still, as soon as Void Staffs and Flat Magic Pen come through, uh, you can definitely evaporate Sivir. And we've seen in team fights, you can definitely evaporate Otter. The shields aren't enough if two people come in, and it's rather easy for Fizz and Hecarim to reach. So those guys being gone, it sometimes comes down to who's got cleanup or who does survive that. Yeah. Hanser now on the Hecarim does finally have uh, the four main items completed for his Cinder Hulk. Uh, Hecarim as well. So that guy can sustain himself actually very well in the team fights. Yeah. So he's definitely. become definitely a big damage threat. Yeah, Triforce then helps him a lot. Keen nods to the ref, says, all right, I'm okay. Takes a sip of his drink, water or coffee, whatever his poison ends up being. And we'll be getting ourselves back into the game very shortly here. As we get ourselves back in, Dragon's up in seven seconds, Baron's up in 44, and all of Gravity respawns in between 32 and 37 seconds. So there's a very small window that theoretically enemy could recall, rush down Baron, and then be met by Gravity right as Baron dies. All right, so it looks like we have everything cleared up. Um, the problem was Keen suspected a bug with Fizz where uh, he thought his E didn't do any damage to Rumble. However, Rumble had just popped the shield. They went back and checked it. Um, 
that was just Rumble turning on his Scrap Shield. Yeah, and with an Abyssal at 200 AP, it's going to be exactly. a good amount of damage blocked. All right, so it's good that he calls it out. I'm actually got to yeah. give some props to, to Keen for even like noticing it in a hectic team fight. He's like, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's, it's the right choice. I mean, I'm just, I'll take the pause if it means you're, you're sure that the game worked the way you wanted it to. All is well, and on our screens, we are back into the game. 25 seconds of the respawn. Enemy Esports say we want to go down mid lane. They are, I think, certain to get an inhibitor for this. Inuk will tank the turret as they wait for the mini wave to come on in. And there they go. Inhib will go down. 12 seconds on the respawn. The dragon is up, but Baron's up not too far after that. I like how they immediately leave the scene. They don't even want to take the chance of going for those uh, Nexus turrets. Those Nexus turrets, they are not worth very much unless you're going to end the game now. With yeah. the last couple of uh, round of patches, taking a lot of the experience and gold out of those objectives that are inside the base. So definitely not worth the risk at this stage in the game, getting caught inside the enemy base, pulling out, grabbing the dragon, and then trying to get position on Baron. Much more important, Gravity is going to rush over there very quickly. They've got the pink ward dropped. Will they just start it up? Flares That's coming right. from base. Everyone was on the right page, though. They sent only Vayne to take down Dragon. She has joined this spot of the map in time. Rumble's not, not there bad. just yet, and it's going down quickly. Down under half HP. Pull but off. The rest of enemy are here. Yeah, you can't just sit in the pit against Rumble, Cassid, and expect to win that one. Body drop is at half. He was helping clear away that top lane wave when he had to come down. And the dead inhibitor. They're sending. They can't Otter? send Vayne. Yeah, they can't send They, they can send at right. most Inox. He's the most Flares went, or Flares went back, but he doesn't have teleport. Sort of They're accounting. Back, knowing it. Counting on the fact that Gravity don't know the teleport timer. Yeah, okay, I get, that is the right choice. Slight mind games. Also, he's got good AoE. It looks like that's all fine. Never mind. Otter cuts the wave. Yeah, Flares was the one used. Yeah, yeah if we missed the, uh, That's what we meant to say. Now it's the battle over positioning. The wards around Baron. There are some very scary champions around in this map. Haunter does have teleport. He clears the mid lane away. Both teams, of course, with one killed inhibitor. Though enemies was killed more recently, meaning they will eventually hold the map control. And also keep in mind, enemies sitting on four dragons right now, actually. Throughout the course of this game, they've managed to always eke that objective. Meaning five minutes from now, enemy have a potentially game-winning objective in their hands. I feel like Baron is already that point of power as well. The thing is, Dragon's much less of a risk to take. So once it does come back up, enemy will have a much uh, easier time pulling gravity into an advantageous fight. Big wave bot lane. It's going to slowly build up and push in. Hanser, of course, still has that teleport, though, so it could be trivial for Gravity to turn that one back around. Gravity will keep <laughs> mine sitting on two smites and a Nunu, so securing objectives should be fairly easy. Some poke on to move, though. Down to half. Sivirals, he popped. Otter and trying to run away. Out. And in comes Hanser to buy some time. Careful, everybody. One third health loss on him. Move still walking forward. And here's the engage. They're going to catch up to Flares. Pops the equalizer. Turns back around. And there's the golden flame spinner. Move nearly dead. Hanser dropped low as well. Who's going to be the first kill? It is going to be Move. Flares forced to run. The hook on Otter. In comes Buddy Fubu, but there's no follow up. Hanser takes one down. Kills on both sides. The ulti going to chase on down. It's four kills to two. An advantage of enemy esports. Only all tech alive. Is that game 40? Plus 50 seconds here on the respawn timers, and Altec would have to pull. Ah, oh, he's toast. Oh, the hook's gonna miss. Trashy can't quite catch him with anything else. The W reactor's not gonna do it either, but Otter almost in range. That's the crit. That's the kill. Super minions in the base. This could be the game. Ooh, it did all come down to the single team fight there. Ooh, and uh, congratulations to Enemy. They're able to win their first game. 100% win rate for Enemy in the North American LCS. And at the very end of it all, they sit only about 300 gold up. That'll tell you just how close this game was. 42 minutes and 40 seconds. Otter with a 16 KDA on Vayne. Congratulations, Enemy Esports. Ooh. Yeah, what a nerve-wracking game when it's oh, so man. even the entire time, and it just comes down to team fight positioning and mechanics. <sighs> All right, so, so far, you know, Aiden said it at the very start of the day. He says, I think Enemy Esports is a top five NALCS team. Well, Gravity finished fifth, sixth last time around in the North American LCS Spring Playoffs. 
by beating them. You're saying, all right, this looks about like the right place for enemy esports to be if that prediction is true. Now, of course, Gravity are still adapting to their new players. Sync Vicious and Cop are out. Move and Altec are in. And while they played pretty well individually, you were talking about it, shot calling still is something that Gravity has to learn to do better. Yeah, I feel like uh, they'll get more comfortable uh, with pushing harder on those mid-game windows that they have um, and be more confident to follow one route. When you spread out and try and grab too many things, mm -hmm. sometimes you get nothing. Water through your fingers. Sometimes you put them all together and you at least get to hold some in the palm of your hand. But slipped away. One kill difference at the end of it all. One turret difference at the end of it all as well. Enemy had even lost an inhibitor. I mean, a very close game between these teams. If we were to watch them face off a lot more, a best if I would probably go three to two. <laughs> this one did end up in enemy's hands, though. And now as they discuss their trials and tribulations of the day, of course, they'll be facing off against another NALCS team tomorrow, as will Gravity, of course. We're only into day one of the first week of the North American LCS. And I think both these teams have a lot more to show tomorrow. I'm going to say all the North American LCS teams have a lot more to show. Nope. I'm going to say at least one team picks the exact same five champions. All right. I'm wrong. I don't quote me on that. I hope it's Impulse. That was pretty fun to watch. <laughs> it was a good comp. I want to see the one again. It worked pretty well. Uh, at least Impulse looked the same. So, you know, they didn't really show us too much different, I guess. I mean, I'm like. I'm all aboard the Bami Cinder uh, top lane instead of a Giant's Belt. All right. On Yasuo. That looked okay. great. Sacrificing 80 health for the passive burn. Yeah. Deals. Sounds like a great deal. It's good eight week clear for some minions. <laughs> Impact's a great salesman. All right. Well, great. Impact going to sell some items over to Kobe here. I'm going to stick with my conventional builds, then eventually get catch up with the times as I realize it's actually the correct way to go about it. Either way, Enemy Esports going to be one of the five teams ending the week one and zero. Inox played about the way we expected to him. Pretty hard carry. Cast performance. Otter also stepping up very well. So it's good to see those two carries starting off quite nicely. For now, we're going to hand it off to Jat, who's 